to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. Joining us from the University of Newcastle School of Education, John Fischetti. And John, hello and welcome to Mornings. It's so nice to uh, have you back in. The story today is the report that's come out of the Grattan Institute, which really looks at teachers' marks. What is that, John? Well, the real premise of the uh, report is around the fact that there are so many learning gaps between children in one class. Let's say there's 30 children in year eight math. That may range between kids that are working at a year two level all the way to year 12. And then there's one year eight teacher trying to manage that. So that's the thrust of the challenge of being a great teacher for that many diverse learners. Okay. So when we look at that, though, how, how does a teacher cover such a spectrum of children within a class and pick up perhaps either end, those children that firstly are struggling. But what about the top end yep. and challenging and p- pushing kids that are, are clever? So the criticism in the report is that teachers tend then to teach toward the middle or the lower end, leaving students who are possibly doing very well or already mastered the material for whatever reason, maybe unchallenged. And that's where a lot of parents I see wonder, can one teacher do it? So the solutions involve what in education we call differentiation, planning three or four actual lessons inside of the one for the students who need to catch up, for those that are ahead, and not just penalizing those that are already ahead while they wait for the slowest student in the class to catch on. That's a pretty sophisticated skill and tough to pull off with only one brain and two hands. Yes. Is that where kids that sometimes are quite clever can lose interest and play out a bit, muck up because they're bored, they're frustrated, there's nothing here for me. Sometimes in year four, year five, year six, you'll see discipline issues manifest because the child doesn't feel challenged. What some schools have done, and that's the relationship with the university that works, is add a practicum or intern student to the class. Now, all of a sudden, there's two adults. Uh, In some schools in the early grades, they'll have the mums or the grandmums come in to volunteer to do reading and Cleverly, the teachers have the kids that need the reinforcement of the reading sitting with the grandmother while the teacher's moving the kids that are advanced to the next phase. So extra adults. In Finland, one of the shining lights we use in education, rightly or wrongly, they'll do what we would call overstaff. They'll add expert teachers to the class. And obviously, if there are students with special needs, physical or cognitive handicaps, it's really required we have extra specialists in the class that won't not only work with those children, but they can actually help with whatever learning needs are taking place throughout the class. So one of the keys is a master teacher who can plan multiple lessons. It's like a three ring circus, Yes. but it actually takes extra adults. And some of the emerging technology can help if we control it right, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago. The smart boards and things. But in, in reality, How do we get more adults into a classroom? I've just picked up that you've mentioned parents, grandparents, carers, interested adults coming into the classroom. Is that really what we should be aiming for or should we be also pressing for just smaller class ratios? Yep, particularly through year three, the smaller class ratios are actually research-based. After that, it's not really proven that it matters too much. It does to most of us who realize that 29 is different than 19. Mm. But because most teachers don't teach differently whether they have those once they get in the upper grades, the research only really shows from year three back, it's crucial the lower class size. But if we have extra adults in the larger classes and the technologies to support, and we have the kind of curriculum that's motivating children, not just what I call the two by four classroom, the two covers of the textbook and the four walls of the room. Mm. Kids are so motivated now by all the stimulus that that's actually not very relevant to them like it might have been for us. So all those variables have to be put in place. So for anyone listening to our conversation today thinking, you know, I could probably spare an hour a month or a fortnight, do you encourage those people to go and turn up at the office of their local public school and say, look, I'm interested in this, or I have a child in this class, 
I want to be part of it. Are schools actually open to that? Schools are very open to that. There are some child protection processes just to verify and all of that that must be taken care of. But the right teacher will find a way to use additional adults. It may be on Friday for a literacy day. It might be for an oral exam for a child that might not be able to read at the level yet, but they can they can recite it, and the teacher would like that parent to take those children to another space and have them read or say, say the exam, different ways in which additional adults can really help. The key also in teacher preparation for us here at the university is not to teach one style, that we have to go into any lesson with three or four learning styles kind of in our minds so that children who are a little bit behind, we're going to review this way for those that are ahead, it's a little bit different. But what many teachers end up doing is they put kids in groups. And then the, the kid doing very well ends up doing it for the rest of the group. And everyone's discouraged, including parents at home, saying, my child is just teaching these other kids. So teacher preparation itself has to get more sophisticated, not just assume we put kids together and say, figure it out. Fantastic. I'll, I'll, every time you come, I feel more inspired. Thank you so much, yep, John thanks, Fischetti. Mel. John is the head of the School of Education here at uni- the University of Newcastle. And I've got to say that uh, it is people like this who are really producing the teachers that I want to teach my children into the future. Thank you, John. We'll see yep. you next fortnight. Yep, thank you. We do it every Wednesday fortnight and we would love you to uh, be part of the conversation as well. Maybe you'd like to give us some feedback. 49216216. How do your kids go in school?